Beginning with South Carolina's 1950 identification requirement at polls, Voter ID laws have been a constant feature of political debate and policy proposals. The modern movement toward voter ID laws began in the 2000s, as more states required identification to vote, or altered existing requirements to be more restrictive. 20 states have put new restrictions in place since the 2010 midterm election, according to NYU Law School's Brennan Center for Justice. The acceleration is in part a result of a 2013 Supreme Court decision that struck down a law requiring states with a history of racial discrimination to submit voting law changes to the federal government for preclearance before their enactment. The court held that the Voting Rights Act, which prevented states and local governments from using voting tests or other discriminatory mechanisms, applied to conditions in 1965 and not those of today. But since the Republican takeover of many state houses in 2010, new voting laws have continued to emerge. The Brennan Center found that during the 2016 election, 14 states, Alabama, Arizona, Indiana, Kansas, Mississippi, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Ohio, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, and Wisconsin will have new voting restrictions in place. These restrictions include stricter photo ID requirements, early voting cutbacks, and registration restrictions. President Obama, along with many other leading Democrats, is a vocal opponent of such laws. While facing opposition from lawmakers and activists, such policies still garner strong support, especially among Republicans. Proponents assert that voter fraud is prevalent in American democracy. However, voter fraud is not as common as many proponents claim. For example, in New Jersey's 2004 general election, 3.6 million votes were cast, and only eight were invalid, meaning a fraud rate of less than 0.05%. A Texas law attempting to restrict the types of IDs accepted at polling locations was struck down by a United States Court of Appeals this summer. The law was found to have a discriminatory impact on the more than 600,000 voters it would have disenfranchised. Similar to the Texas law, HB 589 was passed in 2013 by North Carolina's legislature and was filled with provisions that removed same-day voter registration, removed early voter registration, removed early voting, and required photo ID on election day. Governor Pat McCroy compared the voter ID requirement to needing an ID to purchase medicine or pass through airport security. Opponents of the law, however, note that North Carolina legislature requested data on the use, by race, of a number of voting practices when drafting the bill, according to NPR. They continued to then pass HB 589, whose provisions disproportionately affect African American voters. As Election Day approaches, a number of states that have not been considered swing states for decades, like Georgia or Arizona, have joined the ranks of Ohio and Florida as possibly crucial to the candidates' potential victories. Georgia, in particular, has seen over a dozen reports of voter fraud within the last year. In response, various legal groups have begun to support voter ID law litigation. Other newly named swing states have followed suit. But voter ID laws are importantly linked to partisan politics. Historically Democratic-leading minority groups such as Blacks, Latinx, and Hispanics have seen decreased voter turnout in states that enforce voter ID laws, essentially skewing the electorate in favor of white Republicans. This may be of particular concern to Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton, as well as other Democrats running in 2016 who see these laws as attempts to subvert democracy, rather than protect it. But until the courts rule or the partisan makeup of many state houses changes, voter ID laws may be here to stay for a bit longer, whether Democrats like them or not.